Welcome back, everyone, to another special episode of Bibliophiles. We usually answer one particular book question, but this time we're taking a kind of retrospect, retrospective and a look forward uh, in the book world. And I'm joined today by Amanda and Lucy. First, we'd like to talk about a little, uh, a little bit about what we've been reading lately or what we just finished. Amanda? I am very excited to talk about a year in books with you guys today. Usually we do a little quick chat, but today we're going to take our time and delve in. Um, so I've actually read a lot of books the past week or so. Um, I read this amazing book called American Utopia by David Byrne um, of Talking Heads fame, and then Myra Coleman is the illustrator. And it has um, these really cool illustrations and his text to match. It's a new book. It just came out. And it's based on, there's an album called American Utopia, and it just came out as a movie, American Utopia, directed by Spike Lee, and it's based on the Broadway version of the album. So basically, there's many ways to absorb it. I really, really, really like this book. It's really short. I read it the other day in my yard when it was like a balmy 45 degrees, and the sun was on me, so I had a really good time with this one. Um, another book I just read recently is a... An adult graphic novel, Displacement by Lucy Nicely. I think we've mentioned her before, haven't we? Maybe. Yeah. Um, I, I don't read stuff. a ton of graphic novels of, for any age level, but I really enjoyed this one. Um, it's uh, basically the author is taking her parent or going with her grandparents on a cruise, and they are both like in their 90s and they have difficulty managing and getting around. And it's just a wonderful look at families um, being together and how you manage family. So I thought that was a really, a really good book to read. Um, and then the one I'm reading right now is an adult fiction, and it's a thriller. I have no idea how this book came to me. Um, I follow a lot of like blogs and different people who suggest and recommend books. This one is called When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Alyssa, or Lucy, do you know this author? That's on my list to read. Um, was it like I just something? I think I think maybe it's been on lists recently because it's like relevant material and I don't know. Is it good? Um, so the back says Rear Window meets Get Out in this gripping thriller from a critically acclaimed and New York Times notable author in which the gentrification of a Brooklyn neighborhood takes on a sinister new meaning. I am maybe a third of the way through. It hasn't gotten sinister yet. Um, I'm enjoying it so far. It's really, I've been staying up late reading it. I'm enjoying it so far. I have no idea. The, I put things on hold at the library and they become available yeah. and I say, oh, well, where did, how did I come up to, okay, let's read this. So, um, so that's what I've been reading lately, kind of a mix of everything. And there's one other book I've been reading lately, but I'm going to bring it up later. What have you guys been reading? Lucy, what's on your shelf right now? Um, so I, I am reading a few things right now. Um, I just started a book called Homeland Elegies by Ayad Akhtar, and it's been on, you know, the end of the year lists are coming out, and this is one that's been on all of them, but I realized the other day I was looking through the New York Times, and I was like, oh, I read four out of their five fiction recommendations for the year, but I did not read this one. Wow. So I started this, and it's, it's great. It's like, it is a novel, but it's extremely autobiographical. Um, like, this author grew up in Milwaukee. His parents moved here from Pakistan. That's the same as the main character in the book. His father's a doctor, all these similarities. But um, it's sort of the story of the world that has existed since September 11th. Like, what is the world that September 11th made? So it's part social commentary, um, part family drama, really a father and son story, but he's a great writer. So I've been pulled right into that one and I'm excited to continue with that. Um, I've also been, I'm in the middle of reading Emma by Jane Austen and I picked it up. It's been in the huge stack by my bed for a while, but I just recently watched the most recent version of that movie. There was a movie that came out in 2020 with, um, Anya Taylor Joy, who's in The Queen's Gambit, which is a really good show on Netflix. But um, 
I loved that movie version of Emma and I just was reminded of like the the comedy and the elegance and the social satire that is in Jane Austen. So I decided to read it and I love falling into this world every day. It's just like this little, I don't know. I love it. It's great. Have you read Emma before? I've not read Emma, but I've read other Jane Austen. And so it just has that familiar, comforting feeling. But um, I feel like I'm pretty familiar with the story of Emma from movie versions and there's like clueless and it's been done in a lot of different ways. Um, so it's just, it's a joy to read. And then I'm almost done with this. Um, this is a book of essays called How to Make a Slave and Other Essays. This was shortlisted uh, for the National Book Award, nonfiction. It's by an author, Gerald Walker, who's a professor at Emerson in Boston, and they're really short essays. Um, they're, some of them are about family, about being a father to two um, black sons, or some are just about race, some are about his, his upbringing, which was really interesting, and um, it's like they're all very different, and some of his essays he actually narrates from this uh, second person point of view. So it's like, you do this, which is really interesting. I've not read personal essays, a lot of personal essays that are, that are narrated in that way. So um, those are three books that I'm sort of in the middle of right now. And they're all very different, but in a way, when I was putting together the notes on them, I realized that they all kind of have common themes. Like they're all in a way satirizing the social situation of their time. So that's what I'm in the middle of. Uh, how about you, Christopher? Well, the book that I just finished is called Women in Science by Rachel Ignatowski. And it's uh, a children's book or a youth book. But I, and I just loved it. I learned so much. It's funny. It's beautifully illustrated. It's really joyful to read. And it's really inspiring as well. Uh, you know, I went my whole life thinking that Watson and Crick got, should get all the credit for discovering the structure of DNA. But it wasn't them. It was Rosalind Franklin who actually discovered the structure of DNA. And Watson and Crick just kind of pirated her work and won the Nobel for it on not giving her any credit. So that's just, you know, one story. Uh, it, the, the book, uh, as I said, it's an illustrated book. The illustrations are so charming and wonderful. Uh, but I've seen so many of these kinds of books lately, but uh, Ignatowski's illustrations and her writing, I think really make this stand out a lot. I think she has two other books out in a series. Uh, I think it's Women in Sports and I think Women in Art as well. So I really want to give those a try. So. It sounds like an awesome series. I'm sorry, what age level did you say it was? Was it adult? No, it, I found it in the kids section. You've, okay. Mm -hmm. But there's so much in there for everyone. Oh, know? yeah. I love cheating and reading children's nonfiction because it's a way to absorb the topic in a simple way, but it also will have cool illustration. It's just a quicker way to absorb a topic if you're not like writing an essay or a 20-page you know, paper on something. Right. So, no shame in that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I had a high school teacher who told us, like, if you're doing a research paper, sometimes the best place to start is in the children's section of the library because you're going to get the bare bones information and then you'll be able to delve deeper into like where you want to. But I, I do think it's a great way to get condensed and sometimes more interesting information. So. Mm -hmm. I'll even do that like with um, like kids or teens coming into the library. You might get like a mm -hmm. middle schooler or a high schooler who has to write a paper and they need four books on such and such topic and we don't have what they need. And I'll just give them like a, like a kid's book, even if it's on a higher level saying, hey, just start with this, get you some basics and then we'll find you something meatier online that you can use for like, you know, yeah. more robust mm -hmm. points, so. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, so another thing that we wanted to do today is just look back on some of our older topics and our older episodes and see if we wanted to revisit any, any of them. Vis actually, I wanted to visit. There was a book I talked about in, I can't remember what episode, but I talked about a graphic novel called Strange Fruit. You remember that? It was a bunch of... Um, Let's check it out from the library. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so I 
was so into that book and I learned so much from it. And I just, so I explored that author more and I did find he has a, um, there's a second volume, which I purchased because I love his artwork. And then I also read, um, he did a graphic memoir called fights, which is one boy's triumph over violence. And it's sort of like about his youth. He lived like in the backwoods. He lived in a really urban setting. He got in a lot of fights and he talks about why that is. Um, and he reveals some stuff in that memoir that he said it's like his family didn't even know until he wrote the book. So, um, but it's just, it was just an interesting, like when I was looking back at what we'd done in different shows, I was like, oh, wow, I learned a lot more about that particular author since we did that episode, so. That's great. Yeah. Oh, and his name is Joel Christian Gill. I should mention that. That's Joel important. Yeah. yeah, I checked it out after that episode. I put it on hold and I picked it up and I've had it for a while, but I haven't cracked it yet. Yeah. Um, Strange Fruit. And I also, um, Christopher also recommended, I think this was the, the scariest or the darkest or um, Shirley Jackson's graphic novel version of the lottery. Um, oh yeah. So I, I checked, you guys mentioned that. So on your recommendation, I haven't read either of them. Again, I don't not gravitated towards graphic novels, but once I'm reading them, I like them because it's a fast read mm-hmm. and I can put it on my list instantly as like a finished book. <laughs> They're a lot cheaper to get from the library. Yeah, so that's, I know. Been one, that's been one fun thing about having these weekly, weekly conversations is just getting lots of recommendations. Mm-hmm. Like, I take notes and I put things on hold, so. Yeah. Um, so one thing I wanted to, or Lucy, did you have another one you wanted to mention? Um, not in that, no. I mean, I have, like, another pretty book I have, but, you know, it can wait. Well, one thing I wanted to mention is that um, – when we talked about what we're reading now or what we just read, I just recently read um, the book that I has been on my to read list for a long time. That the book that I never get to, um, and I said it was Monster by Walter Dean Myers. I finally mm-hmm. read it. It's a very quick read. It's a it's a teen fiction book. I think it's from two, 1999. It won the Prince Award in 2000. I think um, it's a great book. It's written in script form. There's a 16 year old boy who is on trial for murder, and it's written in script form. And he it's basically a script form of the court process and his thoughts of being in um, prison and some of the other people that are with him. So this show finally made me finish this book and it's a quick read. It's a really good book. And this is a newer copy that I checked out from the library. Um, so I was glad to have that little momentum or that push to get to the book. I never get to, well, I got to it. It's off the list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one's been on my list too. Um, so I'll really have to do that. Yeah, I mean, I gave it three and a half out of five stars. It's good. Mm -hmm. I wanted a little bit more something in it, but it's still a great book. It's still a great book. Well, I, in a previous show, I had raved about, I I guess it was probably our special when we talked to, to, that kicked this whole thing off, when we talked about uh, adaptations of books, or maybe it was on this show anyway, The Handmaid's Tale. So I did read the the book, and uh, I really really liked it. But I think the the movie, the first season of the show with Elizabeth Moss, is even more moving. And I got thinking about why that would be. I think usually we have an idea that the book is almost always better because the show is for people who don't have enough imagination or. You know, I think we sometimes get these these ideas. And I got thinking about it, and I thought, you know, if you're watching a, a video of something, um, in a way, you have to use more imagination. Because just looking at Elizabeth Moss's face in certain scenes where nobody is saying anything and nobody is doing anything you're completely using your own imagination to fill in what's going on in her mind. And you can't have pages and pages of just blank uh, text or, or, you know, just blank pages in a book where you have to fill in what the character is thinking. And I, so I, I really like the book, but I think that first season of the show is even better. So that's my little spiel about 
why sometimes a, a video adaptation can be better than the book. <laughs> I think you said that really well. I mean, that makes sense specifically with that show. Like Elizabeth Moss's facial expressions are, they tell the whole story. And um, you're right, you don't have like pages and pages of backstory to fill in. And um, so that's, that's interesting. I also think the show puts it in a more... Um, more contemporary place for us. Like the book was written in 1985. So when it came out, it was like, oh my gosh. But um, now, scarily, it doesn't seem so unfamiliar. So to see the show in like, in a setting that looks familiar, when they're, you know, it, it just, it, it might be a little bit more chilling, I guess. Right, yeah. Well, speaking of adaptations and our very first episode, you know, I got to mention Stephen King at least once in like every episode. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is revisiting a past topic. So it is on point with our outline of things to discuss today. Um, I bought myself a new book. I've been buying more books in 2020, which is weird. Um, this is a book. It is called Stephen King at the movies, a complete history of the film and television adaptations from the master of horror. And it's a large book. It's huge. And it is really cool. I have not read a scrap of it except little pieces here and there. But it basically covers all of the film adaptations, and it talks about them, and it starts with Carrie, and it goes all the way through um, the Dr. Sleep from 2020. So it's really cool. It has these amazing, like, pictures and little tidbits from the movies and the shows. And at the back of it, it has a ranking. And there are so many different rankings online if you look up, like, the best Stephen King adaptations. And they vary. But at the end, there is a little bit of a, a list, which I thought was pretty cool. But I'm excited about this. I bought this for myself um, as a little present for Halloween. Um, so I'm excited about that. But that, and I, ha I think, I think I, and I read Carrie recently, the past couple of weeks I've read Carrie. I don't know if I've talked about that on the show, but I read Carrie, which was better than Needful Things. Uh, <laughs> well, one other thing I'll mention is that, so this episode, when it comes out, a new adaptation will have aired on television for The Stand. They're redoing that miniseries. I don't know why. Um, it's on CBS All Access. And I've already done the free trial for another show, so I don't think I can do it for free. Um, I'm intrigued. I think it's 10 episodes, and that starts in mid-December. Mid so by the time this airs, people may have already seen the whole thing. Please drop me a line. Tell me, do I need to watch it? Um, are you guys going to watch it? I didn't even know about it yeah. until just this moment. So. It'll be, it's interesting. It's, it's an interesting time to have the stand come out because yeah. it, it involves a virus. And so, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So that's my, that's my Stephen King moment of today's show. And listen, you said you've got a book, a <laughs> new uh, beautiful book on your bookshelf. Yes, I do. Well, it's not, it's not a new book to my bookshelf, but I, um, had recently pulled it out again, and it, and it is beautiful. And it's this book um, called Where the Animals Go. And it's Tracking Wildlife with Technology in 50 Maps and Graphics. And it's by James, James Cheshire, and actually Oliver Uberti wrote this here in Ann Arbor. He did, he works with literati. He did like yeah. all of their graphics. Yeah. And um, so it is basically like, I mean, there's just all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm trying to find an interesting one. It'll be like they, they put tags on a bird and they, or they, you know, um, track whales. But there's, I'm just trying to find one <laughs> that's pretty. But the reason I pulled it out is that I have, um, oh, this is a story of a wolf that traversed the Alps. So, like, you can't see the lines, but really, it's like one wolf who crossed the Alps. And they, um, but I, I pulled it out. I've read some different science books this year and one was talking about arctic terns which actually have like the longest migratory um flight and then i recently finished a book on eels and i wanted to learn about how eels travel so i was like i think i have a book that might tell me that but in doing that i realized like it's a beautiful book and now i kind of want to read it from start to finish like to learn about elephants and songbirds and these fish and um and, and just showing it to you on the screen doesn't do it justice, but the, the graphics are so interesting and it's an interesting way of mapping different things. So um, it was right there in front of me all the time. And I just had to look a little deeper to, to notice the beauty. 
So it looks really pretty. I miss browsing yeah. the shelves at the library and pulling out the pretty books and flipping through yeah. them and pulling the pages. Um, but this goes back to like taking in nonfiction information with like lots of illustrations because you yeah. know, it looks like you can get lost in those maps. So, like where they well, yeah, and there's just something colors. really exciting to me about like, oh my God, I just, I can learn so much just on these two pages, like all this new information. I get really geeked out about stuff like that. So especially when it comes to animals and um, yeah. yeah, so I'm excited for that one. That's cool. What is it called? Can you flash it again real quick? Yeah, it's called Where the Animals Go. Where the Animals Go. And it's, it's really beautiful. Yeah, there was just an article. I just saw Oliver's name pop up somewhere recently. Maybe it was about that book. Is it a new release? It's not that new. Um, or maybe he was doing something in town or doing a presentation. Somewhere. Yeah, he might have done something in town because he does do a lot of stuff with literati. And he has another book all on maps of London. It's all in infographics. Um, it's kind of amazing. So, Well... Um, do you guys want to also just mention what your year of reading has been like in 2020? And if you want to focus on, you know, the last seven or eight months, which has been unusual for all of us, and also talk about what we're looking forward to reading in the new year. Well, we're heading into winter, which is dark. I have, um, as a whole, for, I guess if we consider 2020, I mean, it st I started rough not reading a lot. I was very busy up until the shutdown happened in March. At the beginning of it, I wasn't reading at all. I couldn't focus, and I've kind of gone in waves. Um, I've probably read more than I normally do in a year, but it's so far it's not that much more. Um, like, I've read four books in the past week, and that usually isn't my normal. Um, and I, my tastes have been all over the place. Like, I usually like to blend nonfiction and kids' fiction and adult fiction, maybe a mystery I'm just kind of whatever, whatever holds become available at the library, but I have found myself buying more books this year from like local sellers to support them, but also because I couldn't browse and I just wanted to read things faster than I could wait for the whole list when the library has been um, open and closed. And I'm not an e-reader of any sort. I need a paper physical book in my hands. Um, so I bought more books. Um, there's a huge stack of things I purchased this year that I haven't cracked yet. Um, but I look forward to like, now that I've been reading so much this past week, I do want to continue with that and keep going with that. And like you said, all the, the best of your end lists are coming out and I like going through those. Um, so for me, my, I've just kind of been all over the map. Um, I definitely have read more, but my taste and what I'm reading is not really changed. And I don't even know if my perception of how I'm taking the books in has changed. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, 2020 has been, been a wild ride, but I'm glad I've got my books and my shows. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, Lucy, what about you? Have you had a, a good reading here? Um, I've definitely read more than I usually do, um, and it's sort of been all over the place. I've read some really incredible, um, like, adult fiction, which you would see, like, The Vanishing Half by Brett Bennett or um, Transcending Kingdom by, yeah, Jesse. Like, these are things that are on a lot of lists um, that have just come out. One that I would like to point out is um, Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam, which is, um, it was shortlisted for the National Book Award, but it's a crazy book to read because he writes, it's sort of like this unknown, it's, is it a pandemic? Is it a, um, some sort of biohazard event? Like you don't know what's going on, but people have lost the ability to use their devices to communicate. This family's at like a, um, and Airbnb and it's just it feels so real because it's you don't know there's no answer to what is this outside craziness but I couldn't put it down it was really like just drew me in um but when I was looking for com comfort stuff to read in the past like eight months I just found myself going to middle grade graphic novels. I started by going back to like all the Raina Telgemeier and it just was so nice to be there. So then I just read like everything I could get my hands on that was middle grade graphic. Um, and, and there was a, like a Lucy Nisley in there, uh, Stepping mm -hmm. Stones. And yeah, it was, that's a great place to be. So how about you, Christopher? Well, I also had a strange year. I wouldn't say I read more, but I really kind of recharged my reading and got excited about reading all over again. And um, I did put a lot of books down, though, unfortunately. 
even some kind of popular books. But we're not going to talk about that. I want to look forward to what I'm really excited about reading coming up. Um, my brother gave me this book a while ago, and I'm really excited to read it. It's nonfiction, and I think it's all about the birth of the FBI, which doesn't really sound that interesting to me, but a lot of people have said this is a fantastic book. And then I just want to mention one more book that I can't wait to read, Spain in Our Hearts. I'm, I really don't know much about Spain or the Spanish Civil War, but Adam uh, Hochschild is one of my favorite, favorite historical writers. Uh, he's a historian. He wrote the book uh, King Leopold's Ghost, and that was the first book I had read by him, and it was so good. For many, many years, every time I would see a copy of it in a used bookstore, I would buy it so I could just give out to a friend who was looking for another great book to read. So I also have a stack of books by my bed, and I'm desperate to get to so many of them. Uh, and those are two that I really want to make a point to hit uh, in the new year. So anyone have any last comments for us? Um, I'll show off two books I'm excited to read. Um, I ordered the new Barack Obama yeah, book. I'm really pretty excited and for that. I one. haven't even finished Beloved by Michelle Obama, but I'm excited about this. And then I also have this I got in the summer, um, Remain in Love. It's by Chris Rance, the drummer for the Talking Heads. And it kind of talks about their story. So I'm excited to nonfiction um, memoirs. Um, and I like reading a nonfiction while I'm reading a fiction because I, I can. it takes me a long time to get through a nonfiction, but I like having both at the same time. Yeah, so I do that. about those too. Um, one thing I'm really excited for is Angie Thomas, who wrote The Hate You Give and On the Come Up has a new book coming out in January called Concrete Rose. So is it the same universe? I don't know. Because on the come up is sort of it was like a bit of the same universe. Yeah, I think it is. I mean I think it is. Like Concrete Rose, I think it comes from a lyric or a poem written by Tupac Shakur, and they actually talk about a rose growing in concrete in The Hate You Give. So I don't know, but um, I, I liked both of her first books a lot. Christopher, you were telling me the other day you just watched that movie. So and I was, I was, The Hate You Give, yeah. I was uh, so, so thrilled to watch it, and I was mm -hmm. so really drained mm -hmm. uh, yeah. after watching it. Well, oh, the book yeah. is even better. <laughs> yeah, the book is great. Yeah. Um, so I'm excited. Now I want to read the book too. I sh that's mm -hmm. that's going to be on my list for 2021. Yeah. Cool. I think Concrete Rose is about the dad. Is his name uh, Mav? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think it's it's. Oh, the it's, book is about him. I think so. I was just reading. That's it. cool. That's exciting. Yeah. Right. Need to look it up. Right. Yeah. Cool. Well, we will be excited to see you in the new year, and we'll be back with a new regular format show. And the question that we will be answering is, what's a favorite self-help self -help book that you have read? Until then, we'll see you next time, and happy reading.